if you've never really talked to her and you want to like get to know her and go on a date, literally I have done this a, a lot of times is I usually, if I want to talk to a girl that I think is like attractive or I think she's cool and I want to get to know her, I, it's going to be really hard. And, uh, it, it, this is, this is really the, this is what you got to do. You just got to go walk up to her and just state your intentions. Like say, just say that you, you're like, Hey, my name is blank. If she already knows your name, you don't need to say that. But like, just say, go up to her and say, Hey, I really think you're cute, blank, whatever, whatever you think about her. Uh, you want to go on a date sometime. Really now? <laughs> Yeah, man, it's a, it's it's real. I mean, it seems pretty like simple, but like the key takeaways are you need to approach her obviously with some sort of confidence, state your intentions, which is you know putting yourself up there up front and being like, all right, I don't want to like dance around the subject. I have to be completely clear and conscious about what I want from this conversation. So you start the conversation by stating your intentions and then also tell her how you feel at the same time. And that that's the best way to break the ice so she immediately knows what you're going for. Because if you, I guess, if there's any... Beating it, yeah, beating around the bush, then it can become confusing and yeah. awkward. Yeah, the girl might think that, like, what is this guy coming up to me for? Yeah. Wait, I usually been one to talk to the person first. I always been like get to know them before you ask, but I'm always afraid because I do not know, do not want to mess it up. Mm, yeah, so that's that's the hard part is that if you have no preconceived notion, like no, it's not preconceived notion, no previous relationship with this person, um, and you really want to approach this person romantically. I think the best way to do that is to start off with that in mind because if you go into it with the intention of it it's fine to get to know her and even if you do get rejected you can continue to have a relationship with the girl and she might actually end up changing her mind at some point point. Mm -hmm. and if you show that you're cool calm and collected and still can take a rejection you know even if you do get rejected and you just say, oh, th that's fine. Like, we can just, you know, hang out sometime or do some th something sometime if you guys are into the same kind of stuff. Or maybe you just start, like, regularly, like, chit-chatting with her if you genuinely enjoy time with her or talking to her. And it can turn into something else. But it's if your intention is to want to date her and have a romantic relationship with her, it's just going to come off uh, better if you state your intentions from the start. Because also it can lead to like frustration on your side too. Like if you beat around the bush and you just like kind of subtly try to throw hints out for like, you know, weeks, hoping that she'll catch on and nothing ever happens, then then you're going to feel like you wasted a bunch of your time and mm -hmm. it might lead to frustration. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Girls do like it when a yeah. guy shows confidence and just yeah. goes up to them and says like what they want yeah in a pl in like a polite in a polite way yeah don't say and the thing is like if they reject you you don't react in like a poor manner don't like tell them the fuck off or anything yeah just be cool about it and you can still continue a conversation with them if like they're still talking to you yeah. like you can continue talking to them yeah and they might even like you more after that because you're like wow this person is like got rejected and is still cool yeah, yeah. and i can get i can give you a direct example of that because i'm currently in like a i've been dating a girl for about i think four years now uh almost five and um i met her at work uh i i pretty much she knew pretty much immediately my intentions i was rejected multiple times by her but i didn't take it in a poor way we continued being actually really close friends. She was really cool. We hung out a lot and things like that. I never was awkward or weird. Um, we continued our relationship even though I was rejected by her. Because I had taken it so well and just kept continuing to do my thing, eventually she actually fell in love with the person who I was 
because of the interactions we had and stuff like that. And she ended up giving me a chance because of how well I took it, I guess you could say. So like, that's a direct example of you can get rejected. And if you take it well, if you deal with it the right way, it can actually be a tool for you for success. 100%. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Also, another thing to, to point out is that when you do go, like, confront her and, and talk to her or ask her out or whatever, um, then uh, you it should also be in, like, the correct setting. Like, you don't want to, like, interrupt, like, if she's, like, in a circle of friends or something like that. Like, you should definitely find a situation where it can be, like, a one-on-one -on -one conversation, I think, is best. Yeah, yeah I agree with that. Yeah, like, don't bother her, like, if she's in the middle of something or something like that. Um, but if you see her, you know, if you're just, like, walking to her from class, um, you know, just catch her in a moment where you can just have a one-on-one -on -one conversation and you're not kind of, like, butting in or, or, like, breaking a moment. Tell me more what do females want, want in, in a, a guy. guy. Want in a guy. Well, that, that's yeah. I feel like that's that's gonna vary. Like the thing is, so I think, I think in like what the the most common thing is to, uh, I guess, is that you're passionate about the things that you like, and you you aren't afraid to show that thing. So let's take Super Smash Brothers for example. Like, I am into super nerdy things, like video games and, and shit like that. My girlfriend is not whatsoever. She's like a history nerd, kind of, but she's also like much more into like mainstream stuff or whatever. But the fact that I like video games, like she'll make fun of me for it in a playful way. But because I own it and like I'm totally about it and I'm like, no, fuck you, I love video games or whatever. Like that's attractive to her even though it's something that she finds not attractive. The fact that I am ab all about being into video games, even though she finds it unattractive for a guy to be into video games, makes her more attracted to me. Yeah, stand up for what you like is like super, like super good. Like, cause you don't wanna, you don't wanna like try to impress the person. Like, you don't wanna say like, oh, I like that because you like that. Like, it, it's really good to just be like, I love this. Like, even if it's, like, something really bizarre, like, you're into, like, marbles or something like that, and you just are <laughs> in love with this. Like, you're, like, it, it'd be like, why? Why is the person so intrigued by this? But, it, like, it really does, like, if you're so in love with it that you can pull other people to be interested in it, yeah. that is that is really attractive. I mean, I, I think. even, even like, haven't you ever been in a, in a social situation where somebody introduces you to something that you've never heard about and you don't know anything about and they're like going on and on and on about it and you can tell that they're like super into it even though you know nothing about it and they kind of pull you into their passion or their like, you know, what they love to do or whatever and you give them an ear because they're so passionate about it and they're like, Oh, I'm totally into this. And you're like, oh, that actually sounds pretty dope. It's it's just really cool when people aren't afraid to, you know, be into what they like. And they're not, like, afraid to talk to people about it. Yeah. Yeah. Me with Gundam, LOL. <laughs> See, yeah, dude, dude, that's sick. See, that's something that's really unique. That's something that's really unique about you. And uh, you can you can share that with other people if you're really unique about it. Yeah, caring is cool. <laughs> exactly. Caring is tight. Caring is super tight. Yeah. Oh, Raugen's giving you a shout out. Oh, oh, Raugen. Yo, what's good, Raugen? Yeah, I'm back, and uh, there's no more bunnies. But uh, perhaps not this coming week, but next week you might see bunnies again. Yeah. Sharing is caring. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, dude, honestly, just... It's like the stupidest thing. Everyone says it, but it's like the, almost the truest statement. It's like, just be you and don't, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Just be who you are and just say what you like because it's cool. The, and the thing is, not everyone's going to like you. 
Like, if when you show you who you are and say that you like Gundam, there's going to be people that be like, this guy's a fucking weirdo. I don't want to talk to this person anymore. And that's going to happen. But then there's going to be people that absolutely think that's super cool. So. Yeah. I feel like people, like guys, think they have to put in a lot of work and to ask a girl out. Yeah, so so we actually, we, we covered uh, something called... Uh, one of our one of our course videos about that is called the forbidden female mindset which is uh we actually we talk to a lot of our our friends who use online dating and things like that so yes the male usually is the initiator and usually has a lot less options but the thing is on the female side they have to be the great filter so there there's there's two sides of the coin like, yes, uh, a girl online will always have more options than a guy in generally um, because just because of the way that we work when that we communicate with each other. So guys almost always have to be the initiator. I'm not saying that there are uh, situations that are the opposite. There's plenty of times where girls might be the initiator uh, if they really want to go for something that they want. But a lot of women that I've been with and talked to and all that good stuff, they prefer the guy to take the lead. Um, but on the other respect, when you have an overwhelming amount of people trying to talk to you all at once, then it's a challenge for the women to have to filter out who to respond to and how to judge different characters about you know who they're attracted to, who's, who's gonna be I guess the right pick for them so it's like it's a double-edged sword yes you have more opportunity uh, but you know quantity doesn't always equal quality so that's that's the hard part for girls um, you know it's it's nice to be wanted but uh, as guys we don't really know what unwanted attention is so that's that's the challenge for females yeah not every girl is the same too yeah you're right yeah so it's hard, man. Attraction is hard. Yeah, yeah. It's hard for both. Yeah. Just can't figure about. It's not. It's not easy for females either. Yeah. So. Girls have the easy part on that aspect, since they can be picky and choose what they feel more likely to be better. Yeah, but ragging at the. I mean, it, it is. It. I don't know if it's easy or not because. It's more socially acceptable for men to approach women than it is for women to approach men. Um, and in that respect, I feel like a lot of the women that we've talked to about this, they feel like even though most guys don't actually care, they feel more self-conscious about approaching men because of that social stereotype. So they feel also like we said before, they also have just way more options. So like they have less of a need to have to approach because they're being approached so often. And I've actually ran into girls who went to a bar and have been like, I've gone to like a bar like dozens of times and no guys have approached me. They were waiting for guys to approach them. But then I'm like, why didn't you go up to anyone? They are. They're probably more scared of being rejected than men are. Yeah. They, I, I was like, so why didn't you just look at a guy, like go up to a, a guy and she's like, no, I could never do that. It's because it's scary. It is scary. It's, it's scary. scary. You have, you also, you got to like find ways to like pump yourself up when you want to like do cold approaches and stuff too. Like you have to come up with your own, your own like mentality inside your head to get yourself like prepared and to keep reminding yourself, even if the worst possible thing happens, which is she'll say no and just say, like, I think Chris actually has the example of like the worst rejection he ever got was a, hint, a girl. So <laughs> the worst rejection I ever got by going up to a girl and saying my line that saying like, hey, my name is Chris. I want to get to know you. The worst thing that ever happened was a girl just put her hand up to my face and continued walking. <laughs> And uh, and then I and then my life moved on. That was it. The guy can look at a female like she is, she is cute, but the personality, 
is a whole other ton of bricks. Actually, that is true. They were waiting, but they give kind of signals. Most of the women in studies have proven it. They kept quiet, expecting for us to read their minds to know if we should approach or not. Yeah. Yeah. Lull to that rejection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'll be honest. Chris definitely has done way more cold approaches than I have. Uh, I mostly, when I was dating, I mostly stuck to like online dating stuff. I, I didn't really do. I mostly did cold approaches when I was in college, and most most of the time that was with liquid confidence. So it was it was a little bit easier for me. Yeah, cold approaches are tough, um, but. They, That's just mean, dude. I salute you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it, it's fine. There, I there's there have been a lot worse, worse situations where I have gone up to a girl, and I try to talk to them. There was one time a girl said yes to giving me her number, and then later said no because I fucked up after she said yes. <laughs> after she said yes, I didn't even know what to say, so I was like. Uh, cool. And then I walked away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's it's it, you really have to doing cold approaches. You do have to just kind of get used to the awkwardness of it because it is gonna be awkward. It's gonna be super awkward. Like, yeah. can you just imagine going up to any random stranger and trying to talk to them? It's like really uncomfortable. You think they're uncomfortable, so then you're gonna be uncomfortable and everyone's uncomfortable. But like, it, the more you do it, it's more, you get like more of a natural at it. So it's definitely tough, but it, it's worth, it's definitely worth trying. I think a, a good way to look at it is if, like put yourself in the in the shoes of the person you're going to walk up to. So like how I usually did it was like, I would think, all right, if I was at the grocery store and somebody came up to me and said, hey, I think you look really cute and I, I want to get to know you. My name is Rebecca. Like if that was the opener at the very, like my, the way my brain works, I'm going to be like, oh, thank you. That's really like sweet of you. And that's really bold for you to come up and talk to me, but I'm sorry, I'm taken. And, uh, you know, I hope you have a great day. Or maybe I'd have, like, a little conversation with them. Like, most people in real life, they're not, like, actively going to try and be rude to you. Like, the, the hand in the face was, like, a really unique situation. I think it was St. Paddy's Day in a bar, too. It was St. Paddy's Day in a bar. Yeah, so it was probably, like, the girl was probably pretty lit. Oh, putting the girl on a pedestal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I've done that a lot. <laughs> <That's>, yeah. <laughs> uh, that I yeah. When when I first started like dating, it, I uh, I would always be like kind of like a yes man. I'd kind of like. Just agree with them. Just be like, oh, yeah, they're going to think I'm so cool and nice if I just say, oh, yeah, I like that. I like that. And uh, it was basically just to, you know, bring them up because they're like, oh, yeah, this I want this person to think that I I like everything that they like. So then they like me. It's kind of a weird scenario. And then I didn't really have anything that I liked because I just liked what they like. So, uh it, yeah, you never want to put a person on a pedestal. It just makes you, it, it's like in, it makes you look inferior because if you put them up on a pedestal, then they like be like, what is this guy? Like he doesn't even have like his own interest or anything. So, uh, yeah, I, I, you, <laughs> it goes back to being yourself, like having your own stances on things, and that's how you can like equal to the person. You don't think of them as like a prize to win. You don't think of them as like anything. You just think of them as another human that you want to talk to. And if things go well, cool. Like you can, you know, date them. But like if things don't go well, cool still. Cause like, you know, you had a conversation out of it. You met a new person. You gained experience. Yeah. So. Yeah. 
it, it's a win-win. As I, as far as every single interaction I had with a girl, I, I always thought of it as a win. So. Even the hand to the face. Even the hand to the face, <laughs> because you know, getting rejected like that, you know, that's what you. That's sometimes what you need. You need sometimes you need to take a blow to the ego. Yeah. And I think that that really helps. Yeah, nobody's perfect, man. You know, if you're gonna have assholes. You're gonna have people who are pretty tight. You're gonna you're gonna have everybody in between. But uh, you just remember, you're always your biggest critic, and you're always you're always gonna be harder harder on yourself than other people will. So, just do it. Just do it. Yeah. And if they're not into the real you, they're not they're not right. Yeah, exactly, Abby. Exactly. That's a that's a great way of looking at it. All right. <laughs> you guys, you guys want to play some James now? Should we get into the James? We can, we, we can get into some games. If you have any other questions, though, I love talking about this. Yeah. I love this stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but we're gonna play some. We're gonna play some HD games now. Some SD games. <laughs> SD games is. I really want to say it. This is gonna seem like the game of 2020 compared to Crystal Chronicles. <laughs> 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 One more question. How important is eye contact and posture? Oh. Big, 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 big. So, what I like to imagine, and it's real. this is really hard, is I like to imagine my eyes are like kind of like magnets to their eyes. Like I try to remain eye contact as much as I possibly can. Cause it's super important. It's super important. Like yeah. if you're like looking away, talking, it is, yeah. It, it, it kind of gives off a vibe that you're like you're not either interested or you're confused or like you're not really there you like having a strong eye contact is really big in posture that is also important but I, I honestly think eye contact is more important yeah <laughs> yeah I would say I would say definitely eye contact especially when you're talking one-on-one -on -one with somebody it's especially important like it's it's pretty well known I, I think most people know that if you can't hold eye contact in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, that shows you're nervous and uncomfortable with the conversation. So definitely holding eye contact is big. And posture in general, I think it is good. Like you have to obviously like stand up straight, show that you're engaged by facing them and things like that. Um, nodding, say, like saying yes while they're, while they're speaking periodically to like show that you're actively listening and things like that. Those are all really good things. Yeah, yeah. And even posture is kind of interesting because it depends on the environment. Like, if you act, like, say, like, you're sitting down. Oh, yeah. Like, if you, like, put yourself in a comfortable stance, like, you're comfortable around them, that's pretty, that's pretty big. And you commit, if you make eye contact with them. It, like, really depends on, like, the situation. Like, if you can be comfortable, make yourself comfortable. Don't try to be, like, stiff and whatnot. Just... Make sure you're comfortable. Here's a hot tip. So, I actually use this even in like professional settings too. Um, sh sitting across from somebody is always more intimidating than sitting next to somebody. Sitting next to somebody is going to show more comfort with the situation and the individual than sitting across from them. So if you're on a date with somebody and you have the opportunity to sit next to them instead of across from them, it's always a better choice to sit next to them. Yes. And if you can sit next to them at the bar, that's cool too, because you literally are sitting right next to them. And you know, it makes it easier for like shoulders to touch and stuff like that, so you get like physical contact in there. Yeah. So. Yeah. Physical, uh, I mean, uh, posture and eye contact is important. But I would say eye contact is really important. Chris sat next to me at our first date at a four talk. I definitely know this. <laughs> yes, yes. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. Wait, what does it say? From what I hear, you can start a conversation. Yeah, you definitely wanna. You definitely wanna state your intentions. 
the sooner you I feel like the sooner you say that you're interested in them it's better because like you're new you're mysterious they're like who is this person about there's like a lot of like you know mystery behind the person so it's like it's better to do it from a start than like later down the road if you like do small talk you're not as like you know mysterious yeah yeah the simplest things can be the best way it literally is it's funny I think dating in general is really like a it's simple but it's emotionally hard to do yeah Logically, it's easy, but emotionally, it's hard. Yeah. It's like, it's like, how do you get out of an abusive rela relationship? You break up with the person. It's yeah. that simple, but like emotionally, it's hard. So, same thing. <laughs> because you don't play cards with this guy? Oh, God. You want me to kick his ass? Yeah, I guess so. Trade rule one, rules same. Dude, doesn't matter. Same doesn't mean shit, dude. It's one letter off my name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, we got powerful card. Powerful card. It seems easy to be in a relationship at first, but both of you have to work it together to overcome the struggle to be together to like example marriage yeah man i mean the majority of my relationships in my life have been long term i've done like a decent amount of dating but for the most part i've had serious relationships and uh they've all ended in different ways and some on my terms some on her terms but yeah man it's it's that's the thing, is like a lot, a lot, a lot of people, they like want somebody so bad that they don't realize what it takes to actually be in a relationship. It's a lot of fucking work. It's a ton of work. It's, it's, it's pretty hard sometimes. So, you know, you're, you're, you're running a marathon when you get in a relation, a serious relationship. The dating part is just the beginning. And a lot of people who just want somebody, and you can you can almost tell immediately when you talk to somebody who just wants someone. It doesn't matter who it is; they just want somebody. And that 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 for me is really hard. People to coach when they just they're trying to just have anyone just to have somebody. It's like I understand the need to want somebody, but at the same time. Um, it's, it's going back to that whole thing about, you know, working on yourself and being comfortable with yourself and knowing what you want and being confident in what you like and all that good stuff. That that really makes a difference. Have you ever felt some relationships the dude does most of the work, but we want the girl to do the same as it helps us out? You win, baby! Woo! That's quick thinking. Yeah, Chris was all on his own over there. Um, so I've definitely been in relationships where I've done the majority of the work. Um, like emotionally, I guess I would say. Uh, but I think those were like earlier on in my uh, in my in my relationships when I was younger, where I didn't know how to effectively communicate. Eye drops, great where I didn't know how to effectively communicate to my significant other what I want or what I was lacking from the relationship. Like, I think sometimes it's hard for the other person to have the emotional intelligence to be able to just tell what you want or what you need. Um, so it's important to be conscious of those things. Like, you, ha you have to know if you want something, you have to be able to communicate effectively to tell your partner. Oh my god. <laughs> Irvine's just fucking standing there shooting while the girls are laying on the ground. Oh, here we go. That could be more about 
what do you expect about the other since you're using your own values and ideas to measure the relationship is going love yourself before you love someone else yeah exactly yeah, exactly yeah too true <laughs> love language combo and relationship check ins are clutch yeah yes 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 me and uh, Abby had uh, relationship check ins we haven't done them in a hot minute though but we do love we did talk about our love languages which is pretty cool love languages so uh, there's five of them there's physical touch um, words of affirmation uh, gifts gifts yeah Wow, I should, one of them is one of my top ones. I should know this. There's compliments, words of affirmation. Yeah, yeah, words of affirmation. There's two more. There's one of them I'm not, like, not big of. How do I not know this? Is it time? Oh, yeah, uh, quality time and uh, doing things for others. What is Acts that called? Service. Acts of service. Yeah. I think it might be. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie, dude. When I was dating, I was a bit of a fuckboy, in a sense that, like, some of my partners that maybe I didn't think as much of than my current girlfriend, I probably wasn't a great human to, but the consequences of my actions in those relationships kinda led me to re realize certain things about myself and helped me change my ways of doing things. Um, but at the same time, I think it's important to not overthink things. Like, in this day and age, oh fuck, I didn't equip anything. Uh, in this day and age, it's really important, it's really difficult that to, um, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, it's, we have a lot of options. And there's a lot of doors, so a lot of people have a hard time committing to certain people. If you like somebody, if you like the idea of hanging out with them, um, if you have good chemistry with that person, I think the best thing to do is to just fucking be with them. Like, just try it out. You shouldn't be that afraid of commitment. I feel like we are too obsessed with the idea of our generation at least, because we have things like Tinder, there's so many fucking doors for us to open, right? But is that many doors really a better option than just finding somebody that you vibe well with? Like, there's this there's this idea that you have to like find the one or whatever. It uh, that oh, yeah, it's like the paradox of choice. It's the paradox of choice, yeah. It doesn't make any sense to me. Because if you find somebody you like, there might be somebody in the world that you like more than that person. But if you really enjoy spending time with that person, what's the harm in just getting to know and spending time with that person? They could grow. The person that you were perfect with at one point could grow into somebody that is terrible for you in the in the middle of your life and, and vice versa. So it's good to take chances, see where things go, you, you, you're never going to have the perfect fit. There's always going to be difficult situations, especially in relationships. There's no way to avoid that. What you really have to do is just go with the flow, see how things work. If they work out well, that's great. If they don't work out well, that's okay too. But you just have to be okay with the idea of that. And as long as you're okay with the idea of that, then I think you'll be able to find happiness. mindset where people rush into relationships yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i uh, i know a lot of people like uh they'll do they'll they'll jump into a relationship because they want they like the idea of being with somebody and it usually causes quite a bit of issues if you if you just you know jump into something without actually you know thinking about it or actually it's less of that and it's more of 
doing something just for the sake of doing it is never really a good play. Oh shit, yeah, you're right. Wait, is the mech the best play? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Wait, what was happened? I just commented on uh, Ghostman. He said, there's also a mindset where people rush into relationships because they want to experience how it is, but it gets into the pro. Yeah. Do not overthink it, just have patience. Yeah, exactly, man. Yeah. If you're doing it just for the sake of doing it, that's where, like, you run into problems. Wow, I got more eye drops. Patience is key. Okay, I'm gonna tell you right now. I've... When I was dating, I dated a lot of people. I can tell you, when I first started dating, and then when I started, like, dating a lot of people, when I, like, actually started being good at dating, I was more lonely when I was, like, dating a bunch of people than I was from the start, when I didn't even know how to talk to a girl. I was more lonely talking to a bunch of girls than not talking to any. So, take that as you will, because it's, it's lonely if you just, you know want to do like hookups and stuff like you don't get any fulfillment out of that there's nothing there so that's uh that's what uh that's, take what you will from that <laughs> hey hot bond <laughs>